Hello again, I am Dr. Michael Wax and we are talking to you today from the Neurometabolic Institute of Atlanta. Today we're going to be talking about thyroid. Uh, thyroid is a big situation that is occurring in healthcare today with chronic health conditions and before we go into the details of thyroid and the causes uh, and patterns, I want you to understand that thyroid alone uh, is an issue but there's a crossover with other chronic health conditions that we have to evaluate so people that have thyroid often have other health conditions such as a fibromyalgia they may have a chronic fatigue syndrome they may also have diabetes type 2 or Hashimoto's disease they may also have a irritable bowel syndrome or digestive issues so what happens is if we're not paying attention to the thyroid which may be a cause of other health conditions oftentimes people are not getting better. So today what we're going to do is we're going to really get into some more details of thyroid disorders. And when it comes to the thyroid, the majority of the people that are out there right now with hyperthyroidism or hypo, I'm sorry, hypothyroidism do not need thyroid medication. And in fact medication can often make uh, functional hypothyroidism irreversible. What I mean by that is we often find out when a patient comes to our office that a patient was evaluated uh, by another healthcare pr uh, practitioner and really a blood panel was done but the doctor was only looking for one indicator TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone and from there they base their treatment and the treatment typically is hormone medication and there are six known causes out there or patterns of hypothyroidism and today we're going to get into a little bit more about some of those causes. The, the patterns, uh, the six patterns of what we call functional hypothyroidism, um, there's really only one that's responding to medication uh, and, and then it's even rarely necessary in that case but most of these patterns are related to poor blood sugar control, it's related to stress, it's related to poor gut health or intestinal issues. It's related to a chronic or sluggish liver. Uh, it's also related to hormone imbalances. So only one of the patterns will appear on standard thyroid blood tests that measure only TSH. And some of the problems that occur really are from the doctor who's ordering your test and also how it's evaluated. Here at our office, we are looking at what's called functional lab ranges not the lab ranges that the lab company puts out because that that range is too broad uh, in fact it's so broad that most people actually aren't detected in having uh, thyroid and other health conditions because the range is, is too broad in fact uh, the most recent study I saw was there are about 13 million people that have been undiagnosed with hypothyroidism as a result of most likely bad lab values or the, the range is too broad. We do a functional range. A functional range is an optimal range and that range is a tighter scale. Uh, it, it's something that we need to focus on and when you come in here that's the, the, the information that we're looking for. So really an incomplete or inaccurately interpreted thyroid blood test accounts for dozens, hundreds, thousands and millions of people that have hypothyroidism that is undiagnosed. Now, hypothyroidism can also be caught in time and reversed nutritionally. And we're going to get into that in just a second, but that's by properly interpreting the lab values. And oftentimes when a patient comes in here, they may have already been on thyroid medication uh, for some years. And, and sometimes it is necessary to be on thyroid uh, medication. That's only typically with what's called primary hypothyroidism. And that is uh, a very important part of this disease process that needs to be managed with medications. Now, abnormal blood test ranges are based on pathological ranges. That's, that's that range, the disease range that I told you is very broad, and, and that is what the lab uh, companies use. And oftentimes doctors use that range to make the diagnosis. And often miss the diagnosis. Now, normal, normal functional lab ranges 
uh, uh, are based, what we do here is it's based on functional and that's a tighter range, that range constitutes good health and if it's abnormal it can alert the clinician, us, to what's happening in your development of the disease and if we catch it early enough we can reverse it nutritionally. Now, anemia is a deal breaker uh, and also autoimmune uh, issues are a deal breaker in the sense that I mean that it has to be the autoimmune portion of this and many people are misdiagnosed uh, that they actually have Hashimoto's disease and not necessarily thyroid and they're misdiagnosed and means they're mistreated they have the, they're on the wrong treatment protocol so in those cases of anemia and also Hashimoto's we have to do things differently we have to address those first so when someone doesn't respond to iron supplementation it's often the result of chronic inflammation and managing that problem uh, uh, often resolves the anemia now iodine and tyrosine are also appropriate if people have a thyroid condition but not always in every single condition and so if you're out there and you're, you're, you're using this supplementation many times you will spike up the thyroid condition and make it worse so it's important for your healthcare practitioner to understand exactly what they need to do in your particular case so the next time we talk we're going to get into the specific six patterns of hypothyroidism and what we look for in our office.